Hello friends, welcome to Host Studies YouTube channel. This is part 29 in Azure Databricks playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about how to configure access to an Azure storage using Azure Active Directory service principle. Think like this video is kind of a prerequisite video for the next video. That means in the part 30, I want to discuss about how you can access ADLS Gen2 account from Databricks using using service principle. So this is what I want to discuss in my next video. In my past video, I discussed how to access Gen2 account use from the Databricks using account key of the storage account. This we have discussed in our past video. In the upcoming video, I want to discuss about accessing the same Azure storage account using service principle ID because in real time, many projects will use service principle to access the storage account from the Databricks actually. So this is this video is kind of a prerequisite video for the next video. Why? Because firstly, the service principle whichever we want to use to access the storage account, we need to set up that service principle first. So set up the service principle first and on using for this service principle, get proper permissions or roles on the storage account actually. Okay, so all that we have to do it first and then we have to implement the actual implementation of accessing the storage account from the Databricks using the service principle. Okay, so please watch my previous videos as well if you want to make more sense of the discussion whatever we are having. All the videos in my uh, all the videos in my playlist are in a sequence order. If you watch them everything by one by one in the same order, then you will be getting everything from the basic to advanced concept. So this video purely focusing about setting up this service principle and getting access to this service principle on the storage account and what kind of roles we want to have it on the storage account for a service principle to perform the read operations or write operations or delete operations so all that okay so firstly how to set up a service principle and also we have to understand what is service principle so i am not going in detail about it think like service principle is like your user id only so usually you will be having a user id and a password right with which you will connect to azure right so similarly think like service principle is also one id and password only it is also like id and password only but think like there is no human it is like a virtual id and password okay so you you randomly or virtually created one id and password in the azure active directory and using this azure id and uh, password you can access any azure resources by giving a proper roles on top of this id and password okay so think like this is also like a normal user id what you use to connect to the azure so but in the in your case you you are a human for a human you have a user id and a password and in this case it is like a virtual id and a password you randomly created in the active directory and using that id and password you want to give proper roles on any resource on the azure and then use them in your code or anywhere to access that particular azure resource so let's practically see how to create azure service principle actually so for that go to azure portal now here go to azure active directory see think like azure active directory is nothing but like a, it's like a directory like a telephone directory we have right all the person's details with the phone numbers so similarly all the user ids will be available inside the azure active directory actually so go to azure active directory under azure active directory to create a service principle you need to go to under manage section you need to go to app registration so under app registration only you can create that service principle id and service principle password not only so some people call it like a client id and client password some people call it like a app id and app password so all the terminology is same so basically it is an entry in the service uh, inside the azure active directory inside the app registrations you need to hit this new registration button to create a new user id you can think like a you are creating a new user id but we should not say it like a user id we should call it like a service principle id okay so here for that service principle id you can give a user friendly name so maybe I will give like Mahir test SP. SP means service principle. Let's assume like that. This is my service principle ID name I given. Okay. So let me hit, so don't think about any defaults here. Let the values to be default here. Simply hit this register button. This is going to create a new service principle ID. See, this is the service principle ID which it created, and whatever you are seeing here, it is the name of it, and the actual ID of it will be like this is. This is the service principle ID actually or a client ID. You can call it anything. And for in your mind, you should imagine this is also like similar to user ID. And for this ID, we can create a password also. To create a password, 
once you create a service principal id then here inside the service principal id you need to navigate to certificates and secrets menu here and there you need to hit this new client secret button to create a secret secret means nothing but like a password password for this service principal id so here you need to give a description so i am giving trying to give like test password something i am just entering something you can enter accordingly some description for the password and then you can set expiry also like my service principal id password has a expiry of six months or three months or whatever the time period for that particular password or for that particular secret you want to give you can give that expiry also here and then simply hit this add button to add a secret so remember one thing we create a service principal id or a client id and for that service principal id now we, we are creating a password or we are creating a secret we came here and we hit the new secret and once you created it so this is how it will appear let me minimize this menu here you need to remember one thing whatever you are seeing this here this is the actual value or actual password so this will appear only one time that is the reason when i hover here it clearly says client secret values cannot be viewed except for the immediate after creation so be sure to save the secret when you leave leaving this live so this page when you are first time came at the time of creation of the secret only that time you can view this password if you refresh this page or if you come to this page again in the future then you won't see this value so make sure to copy this and save it in some storage usually we have to store it in a azure keyword safely and then from the azure keyword we can access this password into our databricks account as well that we will do tomorrow so this is the password i mean in the next video okay and this is the password of this particular service principal or you can say secret of this particular service principal you call it either service principal or you call it either app registration or you call it either click uh, either either client okay and if you see when i go to overview page this is the client id of it and this is the client name you can say display name of it so let me copy this client id as well and let me go to notepad and then let me save it here so this is actually like a client id and that is password so let me save this for my purpose why because in my next video i have to use the same service principle inside the azure databricks to access my storage account so here i will say like sp.txt okay so let me save this and now so this is the service principal id created that means one user id created you can think like that so now we have id created in our azure active directory now how to make sure this id gets a access on my storage account why because ultimately using this id we want to connect to our storage account in our next video and then access the files and read the data into that files whatever we want to do it so that means this id should have access on my storage account right so for that what we need to do remember this display name and then go to uh, home menu and from there you can navigate to your storage account so in my case maybe i will be using this adls mahir storage account to read the data from it so here once you go there inside this storage account go to access control and under access control you can see for each user id or for each service principal id whatever the roles and permissions are already granted so let's wait for the page to load here and here let me search like mahir what is my service principal name mahir test sp right so this is my service principal name so let me select this you can see right now there is no roles assigned for this service principal id that means using this service principal id if i try to access this adls gen2 account then i will be doing no operation i mean your access itself will not happen authentication itself will not happen there is no roles assigned also to you so what we need to make sure we need to grant some permissions or roles for this service principal id on top of this storage so that from my databricks code when i try to use this id to connect with the adls gen2 and read the data then it can do it very easily so for that click this add role assignment button here and here there is a role called storage blob data contributed so let me scroll down there is a role called storage blob data contributed if you hit this view button for this row you can clearly say this role will give you all the read write and delete access on a storage account you can see all the permissions whatever it is giving here as well so let's select this role and then let's go to next and here you need to select your service principal name for which you want to grant the roles so let me hit this select members and here let me select mahir test sp right so i have selected my service principal and let me hit save or select 
So once you do your selection here, see I selected this role and I selected my service principal or client ID details and now let me hit this review and assign button. This will actually grant the permissions for your service principal ID on top of your storage account. And what kind of permissions or role we have given? We have given storage blob data contributor role and that role will give you all the read, write and other permissions as well. So role assigned successfully, right? So that means with all these steps what we have achieved, we have created a service principal ID and also we have given access uh, for that service principal on top of my storage account. So that means now our setup of the service principal is done. So once the service principal setup is done, in our next video, what we will be doing that is in the third video, we will use this service principal whatever we created here which is Mahir test SP. We will use this service principal to access my storage account and read the data to it or write the data to it. So how to do that all that we will discuss in our upcoming video. So thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever I do this. Thank you so much.